So I'll jump straight into the presentation. So if you see this as a knowledge circle that, that, that has all the knowledge that, has, that we have kind of gathered over the evolution, and it's, it's kind of expanding with time. We are gathering more and more information, more and more knowledge. And as a child, as a child born in today's date, we have an awesome lot of things to catch up in terms of knowledge. So we kind of start off our education in all the directions, equally motivated about almost everything, equally excited about everything. That's what like the fun of childhood is. And towards later stage in our education, we kind of pick our specific genre, we kind of explore it more, say in bachelors, in masters. And then if we are even more excited, we kind of end up doing a PhD or something. And if you do it, pretty well, we kind of end up adding a little bit to this knowledge circle. So this is, this is pretty much how uh, education system kind of works. It, it helps us, it helps everyone else around us. Uh, design is a bit different in this kind of structure. It, it, instead of going in a vertical direction, it takes like a crisscross direction. And that is what I'm here to talk about today. So it, it works uh, mainly as a relationship between two, two groups or two users or two producers. So if we start with the first one, it's, it's say sort of the producer. We start understanding the producer, his context, his, his understanding, his capabilities. Next thing we do is kind of target the user. We kind of start understanding user's context, his daily routines, his patterns, his, his comfortable level with the with the technologies with the with the producers capabilities and the third thing we do is connect these two guys so that's that's where like the design comes in that's where the conversation comes in and that's where kind of the new dimension comes in which is not essentially vertical it kind of takes different paths depending on where the producer is and where the consumer is and in this case they are pretty far off but they, you know they can be same as well So today we are kind of concentrating on technology as a field. So this, this field of expertise that we talk about is technology. So our producer is someone, say, a technologist who is, say, a developer or a code, coder or an innovator. And our user is, again, essentially anywhere in this whole knowledge circle. He can be a major, he can be a PhD, he can be anyone, essentially. And what we try to do is connect these two guys. So the connection between these two guys is where design happens, is where uh, specifically interaction design happens if we consider technology as our, like the producer field. How that works is if we have, if you have a user and if you have a technology, there's, there's, a, there's no intuitive connect between these two. They're pretty far off in terms of any relation as such. So what we do is we kind of devise the application for the technology. So in this case, like the fire, like the wood is the technology, and then we uh, devise like fire as an application on the on that technology. And then user has a need for that application. In this case, he's like making his food, and that that's what the need is, and that's where essentially the connect should be. But user is still far off in understanding how to satisfy that need uh, using this technology. And there's there's a learning curve. There's a there's an understanding of how to use this whole system for his own benefit. And that's, that's where sort of design comes in. He connects user to the technology, technology to the user, and basically enables the user to satisfy his need using the technology and keeping the things simple enough so that it doesn't get intimidated. So what, what user benefits out of this whole thing is that he, he gets something which is really simple and which is really useful because he already needed that thing. And he, he's kind of like happy towards the end of the whole circle. What technology gets is it satisfies the potential of, of the application that, that the technology started working on. And maybe a bit more than the application itself also, but it, it satisfies the potential. It doesn't leave any stone unturned in that regard. So this connection between user and technology is what interaction designers do. It's 
starts with understanding the context of the user, as I was telling in the, in the previous uh, infographic. It starts with understanding the context, his daily routines, his, his, uh, his exercises, his understanding of the whole uh, environment that he's living in. And after that, it kind of concentrates on what the need is for the user. More often than not, user himself doesn't really realize what the actual need is. They do realize what the problem is, but the need is a bit different in that definition. So, after understanding the need, it kind of zeroes in on technology, which technology suits that need, and then what application for that technology should be devised. It's, it's a fairly uh, simple process to uh, go through, actually, and fairly exciting, because what you're essentially doing is understanding two disconnected people and then trying to connect them together, which is fairly emotional as well, apart from everything else that design is about. Albert Einstein, he, he summarized this whole process pretty uh, accurately. Uh, he says that only an intelligent fool can make something bigger and complex, but it takes a genius and a lot of courage to make it, to take it in the opposite direction. What he essentially means is what is commonly known these days as design is transparent. It's something that, that's so simple that user can't believe that it, it can be so simple, and technologies can believe that you know, it, it satisfies the complexity of the problem with such a simple answer. So, this, this interconnection between technology and design and, and user is kind of satisfied by the designers. But, you know, that's, that's the profession of the designer and that's not what I really want to encourage people to do right now unless you want to. But what I want to talk is how technology can uh, can embrace design in this context and allow design kind of to prosper in the whole process of facilitating something for the user. So, if I go a few step back in the whole circle, there, there are two connections happening here. This one connection where user is connecting to the technology and there, there have been enough number of attempts of doing this by themselves, by the user himself trying to attempt to the technology without any design process involved. It's more commonly known as Jugaad in India, which is a frugal grassroots innovation, where user is user obviously knows his context better than anybody else. And then there's some technology which user realizes uh, with, with his capability for being very curious, being very explorative. He realizes that this technology can satisfy his need. And he uses that technology, works around simple innovations, and satisfies his need. And that's, that's like really the best possible solution when a designer can't do. But the, these are fairly infre infrequent. There's users are not educated enough, or technology is not capable enough in the context. And it's, it's not a process solution. It's, it's something like once in a blue moon kind of thing. The second connection is technology to the user. Uh, now, this connection again is when, when a technologist uh, attempts to, to satisfy the user by himself without primarily involving design in the process. It, it kind of more often than not leads to a failure because a technologist or like innovator can't really understand the user no matter what he does. It's, it's, a, it's a lengthy process of getting into the context of the user and living almost the life of the user which, which an innovator usually don't do. And that's, that's a bit far-fetched kind of goal for an innovator to assume that if it's a really super awesome innovation, it will be accepted by the user. And that's, that's kind of where we kind of lack in the process, and that's where I kind of want to motivate people to be more design conscious in the context. So if you see, there's a, there's a vertical line along, uh, there's a horizontal line along the vertical path, and it essentially uh, is, is like almost a new dimension for somebody going vertically up in, in his education circle. So uh, how usually an uh, education system works in this vertical regard is it's, it's totally based on logic and it, it's like recursive that one logic satisfies the next point, so the next point is accepted as truth and then we move over to the next point and it, it hence keeps on going vertically. 
and it's a very very solid very very sensible structure because it's everything is absolutely correct what design works is it works in the, in a perpendicular direction to this and that's that's where the difference is instead of logic being being like the center most point it's more about exploration it's more about accepting what is better so while while in a vertical direction something is absolutely correct and there's no other correct solution in the horizontal direction it's more about being what's a better solution it's it's never like the best there's always room for better and that's that's where like the exploration comes in so somebody who's uh, moving in the vertical direction kind of you, you know uh, reaching a point where he's like more educated than most of other people in his particular field so he's kind of they are right there and in his own zone and it's hard for a designer to understand where he is get into the context and all that at that point that that particular individual is more capable than anybody else on exploring what his technology is capable of in terms of uh, application in terms of satisfying the user but it's it's just in the different direction it's just in the different dimension and that's that's where a uh, uh, technologist can explore himself it's almost like a metaphorically you are climbing up a building and sitting at a nth floor and you just take your time out sit there enjoy the view and see what's possible in that in that context bob dylan summed it perfectly he say, he says if you are not busy being born you are busy dying it's essentially the same thing as as we were born when we were child we were like exploring every every possible permutation that's what the excitement was about and that's what design is all about that you do that throughout your life whichever point whichever vertical point you are at you still keep on exploring and that's that's what he concentrates on so coming back to the knowledge circle so apart from exploration it, the freedom that exploration gives design itself gives one more freedom it it's it's kind of uh, this no definition of failure in design it's it's more of again like providing a better solution exploring to a bit more depth it's it's more of a motivation to kind of fail harder it's it's like if you fail first time you fail harder you attempt a bit more and then you fail maybe you know a epic fail or something but that that's how it works so this there's, there's no good or bad about exploring there's no direction you can go in this line in this line whichever one you want to take it's more about individually exploring yourself and the context so you kind of get a bigger circle bigger freedom at the point itself so you are going in a new dimension and still have a freedom of exploring that dimension completely as well so so this this gives you freedom to again like explore and fail and then what what else does it help in it it helps you disconnect from your say comfort zone from your own context which you have been so accumulated within within your education system within the years that you have spent in the context that you kind of find it hard to disconnect design kind of design thinking kind of allows you to do that it allows you to go a bit far off maybe look at yourself look at your uh, motivation your vision so so if you're standing in like towards the end of the circle what you see is is much farther distance in terms of your own vertical and what this allows is it's it's kind of a oxymoron but distance the distance allows you to connect better within your field itself because it gives you a long term vision and you with with the long term vision you start working on the shorter steps with much more clarity and that's what it actually does in in like personal life in like professional life it allows you to connect in almost all the dimensions next thing what it helps is it's it's a bit more human more uh, more emotional in its nature then say more monetary the the success is not so much judged in terms of how much money you earned or something it's more judged in terms of um, how how satisfied your user is which is a very subjective term it's it's hard to put in the numbers into that definition it allows you to connect more emotionally with those users because there's there's no scale for that it's it's essentially a connection emotional connection 
so it allows you in in a longer term scale to be more human about your approach about things you do because you are not essentially concentrating on how much money you are making you are concentrating on how happy people are because of you these are some of the points which design kind of helps you in but uh, how how actually to inculcate that kind of thinking into a education system now uh, we kind of rely too much on grades and too much of sort of like quantitative stuff to judge ourselves in terms of capability uh this this room for curiosity this room for design thinking even in this system this a uh, very common kind of design understanding that everybody is a designer no matter what no matter you don't know drawing you don't no matter you don't know sketching it doesn't really matter everybody is a designer there's a left brain to us there's a right brain to us and right brain is creative is explorative it's just that it's not so much embedded in the system altogether it's it's not so much again being very subjective it's not so much graded not so much judged and that's why it kind of gets ignored with time so so the point is that everybody is a designer and it's it's really up to us to kind of get into that thing there are many ways of doing that i'll i'll just uh, mark some of some of the simpler ones which kind of form the uh, foundation of this whole process first one is to be curious it's it's again it's the same thing that you ask the question why again and again and again and it's not in the dimension of your own vertical it's essentially in the dimension of any direction in the same plane or even in the third axis or even the fourth axis doesn't really matter it's only about asking question why you ask about somebody else's context maybe x y z how is he behaving why is he behaving so or in your own context why am i doing x y z thing it's about being curious and extremely curious it's it's about exploring one's inner self and it's 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 uh, very much into the creative side of it what what like musicians or you know the artists might uh, tell you to do but it's embedded in the design thinking as well to kind of explore yourself explore your thinking it's as i said design is a individualistic it's more of a emotional thing and it's it's not quantifiable so you you can't really take a threshold based on somebody else's understanding of a context it's about exploring yourself in the same context that has been explored like 100 times and still coming out with something new and it it works it's it's not that hard it's just being confident about yourself into any random context essentially third thing in in the process is to tell a story it's a uh, it's it's really beautiful thing it's again a oxymoron story seems like unreal but it's it's kind of the most real thing that one can do it's it's about uh, starting with telling a situation starting with telling a person's behavior with about simplest things in life and taking that step forward starting to tell a story of a movie starting to tell a story of a interface anything that comes to your mind and this this third one is like the most easiest one to practice it's really like throw your computer smartphones away just just live like a real life for a day and you will end up tell us telling a story by the next day and that's that's what it's about so thank you